Today we're going to do lab five, the percent composition of a hydrate. First, a little background information. Hydrates are ionic compounds or salts that have a definite amount of water bound to them as part of their molecular structure. The water is chemically combined with the salt in a definite ratio. Ratios vary in different hydrates, but are specific for any given hydrate. An example of a hydrate is Na2CO3 dot 10 H2O. This formula expresses how each molecule of Na2CO3 sodium carbonate is surrounded by 10 molecules of water. The rays dot means that the molecules of water are loosely bound to the salt molecule. The coefficient, in this case 10, stands for the number of molecules of water bound to each molecule of salt. Though the coefficients differ for different hydrates, the coefficient for any specific hydrate is always the same. This illustrates the law of definite composition. When a hydrate is heated, the water of hydration is evaporated. The remaining solid is called an anhydrous salt. The general reaction for this is a hydrate produces an anhydrous salt plus water. The percent of water in a hydrate can be found experimentally by accurately determining the mass of the hydrate and the mass of the anhydrous salt after heating. The difference between these two masses is the mass of the water that was evaporated. The percentage of water can be calculated by the following formula. Percent of water is equal to the mass of water divided by the mass of the hydrate times 100. In this experiment, a hydrate of copper sulfate will be studied. Cu SO4 dot X H2O. Note that the X indicates the unknown number of molecules of water that you will have to determine in this lab. When the hydrate of copper sulfate is heated, the anhydrous form of copper sulfate is produced. This reaction involves a color change from blue to almost white, where Cu SO4 dot XH2O is blue and CuSO4 is white plus X moles of water. This lab should help you understand hydrates and a law of definite composition. The materials used on this lab include a balance, a hot plate, or in this case a Bunsen burner, an evaporating dish, hot hands, safety glasses, a scupula, watch glass, copper sulfate exhydrate, crucible tongues, and a weighing boat. Now for the procedure. Set up a hot plate to approximately 300 degrees Celsius. We'll be using a Bunsen burner for this activity, so we won't be using a hot plate. Place a clean evaporating dish on a hot plate or Bunsen burner and heat it for about five minutes to remove any water that may have been absorbed. Using crucible tongs or hot hands, pick up the evaporating dish and place it on a balance. So I'm going to assume that four or five minutes has passed. I'm going to place my evaporating dish on the balance. Allow the dish to cool for two minutes and then find the mass of the evaporating dish after it is set on the balance for two minutes. So for the sake of time, 
I'm actually going to mass my evaporating dish now and the mass is actually 31.76 grams. This is the mass A in your data. So, it, so I'm going to write 36, 31 0.76 grams for A. Place the evaporating dish back on the hot plate using tongs or hot hands. But well, once again, we're not using um, a um, hot plate, so we're going to be using a Bunsen burner. But I'm actually not going to place it back on, place the evaporating dish back on the uh, fire, the Bunsen burner. I'm actually going to weigh out two grams of the um, hydrate now. Now what, I'm actually going to weigh out three grams because the more mass, the more accurate the read, the results. So I actually have three point, I'm going with 3.2 grams. So 3.2 grams is the mass of the um, hydrated copper sulfate. Now I'm going to place it on the um, Bunsen burner. And I'm actually going to cover it. It says here, um, using a weighing bolt, I actually measured directly into the um, evaporating dish. It's okay, it's no problem. All right, and then we'll cover it with a watch glass for a while, just in case the compound splatters. Now I'm supposed to heat the entire um, sample until it starts to lose color and become an off-white color. Uh, but if you look here, you can see on the watch glass that there's actually water on the watch glass. That water comes from the compound. So remember, it's a hydrate, and hydrates will contain water in their molecular structure. Heating it simply drives the water out of the compound. If there's any caked portions at this time, try to break them up with a scupula while simultaneously holding the evaporating dish stationary using crucible tongs. All right, so I'm just going to take the... Uh, wash glass off now and I'm going to take my sample and I'm going to try to break it up. You can see it's turning an off-white color so that's what's expected so I'm going to break it up And I'm going to continue heating it once I've gotten it broken up really nicely. You can see it's turning really white now. But all the sulfate is not, all the hydrate is not broken up yet. I've got to continue to break this up. I'm going to continue to heat this. see the entire sample is an off-white color. <coughs> Might as well turn the Bunsen burner off. Now it says wait two minutes before you mass it, but I'm actually going to mass it now because um, as the hydrate sits in the atmosphere, it will take on water again. So. I'm now going to mass it, and the mass is actually 
33.74. Okay? Now, in order to find the amount of water that was lost, I must now subtract 31.76 from 33.74. Okay? Okay, 33.74 minus 31.76. And that gives me 1.98. So 1.98 is the difference between the mass of the empty um, evaporating dish and the mass of the anhydrous salt plus the evaporating dish. Now in order to find the amount of water loss, I have to subtract from 3.2, which was the mass of the copper sulfate hydrate. I'm going to subtract from that the mass of the anhydrous salt, which was 1.98. So 3.2 minus 1.98 equals 1.22 grams of H2O. Now to find the percent of water that was in the uh, hydrate. So in order to find the percent of water, you divide the mass of the water, which was 1.22, by the mass of the hydrate, which was 3.2, times 100. So 1.22 divided by 3.2 equals 38.2. Well, 38% of water. So that's the amount of water that was in the hydrate. To find the, um, the moles of water, I have to now divide 1.22 divided by uh, 18. So 1.22 divided by 18 equals 0 0.06, 0 0.07 moles of water. Now I have to find the mass of the hydrated of the anhydro salt. So uh, 64 plus 32 plus 64 is equal to 160. 160. So now I have to divide the mass of the anhydro salt, which was 1.98 by 160. So 1.98 divided by 160 equals 0 0.012. Now I have to divide. But these are moles. Moles of, of the hand hydro salt is 0 0.1.012. The mass, the moles of the water is equal to 0 0.07. So that's H2O. So I have to now divide each mole value by the smallest mole value, and the ratio is going to be 1 to 0 0.07 by 0 0.12. 1 to 5.8. So in this case, I've got one mole of copper sulfate and about approximately 5.8 or 6 moles of water. So in this case, according to my calculations, X is 6, but as we very well know, the X was actually 5, so uh, a little error there. At any rate, we found that the formula is CuSO4.6H2O, which is called copper sulfate hexahydrate, but it should be CuSO4.5H2O, which is copper 2-sulfate pentahydrate. It's got a little error there. So at any rate, that's... Um, that's really how you do the experiment. Uh, I got a little error, but that's expected since I 
was kind of rushing this experiment. At any rate, that's how you do it. And um, hopefully, when you do the actual experiment, it'll come out a little bit better. Okay? All right.